I'm uh, not going to uh, summarize uh, or try to encapsulate all the things that have been said here today, <clears throat> but I, I want to draw a couple of comments before we close. First of all, I want to say that I thought this was a very useful and very rich discussion. And in part, it was uh, useful and rich because um, it focused on an aspect of health and medicine that uh, is sometimes uh, simply not at the forefront, and that is uh, uh, the subject of the environment, the built environment particularly, in which we live and work and play and its effect on health. Uh, so I thought the, the, the choice of the subject was, was, was really good, and it was a very useful day. Uh, we have to remember that um, uh, health is more than providing medical services, and we stress that today. Um, in order to have health, you need to promote um, uh, not only uh, uh, an environment, but you need to promote um, equity and sustainability, and we dug into that subject. It's interesting that the Affordable Care Act uh, really, in a sense, uh, has led on that. It provides funds for the kind of health efforts that used to not be considered part of the health world. Um, some of the points that uh, Greg Katz made uh, uh, need to be stressed. And one of them is you only make progress by involve, or in, in our country and usually, you only make progress by involving two other constituencies. One, uh, private enterprise and the investor, and two, the community. Uh, just health professionals operating on their own are kind of naked. They're not going to really get to where they want to go without involving those two communities. Um, <clears throat> and in the case of the private sector, the most effective way to um, demonstrate uh, that they ought to get involved in health issues is to demonstrate that that is profitable. And I thought uh, Greg's um, uh, description of the uh, uh, the return on investments of health-related in investments was a very powerful argument, and I think it is a very powerful argument. It doesn't automatically, I mean, it's, it's logical, and you'd say, well, why the hell do you need to make it if it's so clear? Well, it, it needs to be sold, like everything else, but it's there, and I think the health community uh, needs to embrace it and help sell it. Um, in the case of the uh, community, uh, uh, I think what I learned today, what, uh, or at least what I was reminded of today, is that issues such as um, an equitable society, uh, a decent quality of life for all, um, um, a respect for human dignity, are not just the sort of the maraschino cherry on top of the uh, uh, ice cream. It, they are central to getting what we want done in the, in the area of uh, health. And it's not surprising. We're talking about human beings. They have dignity is a huge part of what makes them operate, what makes them act this way or that way. And uh, a desire for fairness uh, is built into every one of us. And some of us uh, come out a little better on the fairness side of life than others. And it's not surprising that the absence of fairness is a handicap to health professionals who try to improve the health of the various societies that sometimes are quite suspicious. Um, I thought a novel idea, novel to me, I'm, I'm a little bit of an amateur here, uh, was the notion uh, of using health facilities like a hospital for uh, community activities that have nothing to do with health. Uh, the idea of going to the hospital because they actually serve pretty good food, I mean, it sounds uh, <laughs> contrary to fact, I understand. Um, but if you were a hospital administrator or a health professional who tries to integrate your institution into the community, what better way than to do that? 
Uh, the other better way that was mentioned was to provide a place where people can play cards. Uh, I love that idea. That is, to make that institution a little less formidable, a little less hostile, and a little more friendly. I'm not sure it's going to be the key to improving public health, but it, I like the idea, and it was brand new to me. Um, in the discussion of um, uh, rebuild by design, um, what struck me was important and interesting was the use of uh, foundation money. You know, we're talking about sums to rebuild uh, uh, that are beyond even uh, the New York-based foundations. Um, but the notion of using foundation money to enable professionals, health professionals and others, to organize themselves so that they can actually maximize and optimize the use of the federal monies or government monies that will flow in a situation like that is really, it seems to me, the right way to divide that labor. And I was, uh, I was interested in the way that that was described. Um, An interesting, a couple of interesting points in the discussion of food that, um, that I was uh, struck by, this, uh, by the comment by Ms. Edwards here at the end that uh, some people view the arrival of the Safeway in Petworth as the first step toward gentrification. I, I, I have to think that through a little bit, but it seems to me that it, having griped about the absence of food opportunities and food choices in the poorest section of uh, our city, the arrival of a Safeway, which is presumably very similar to the Safeway, the social Safeway in Georgetown, uh, ought to be celebrated and not, not feared. Uh, so that somehow or other we have to deal with a proposition that when you provide options, you are going to attract, probably some families are not going to move out of that neighborhood or some families are going to move into that neighborhood that are, that are able to make choices because they have a grocery store. But I, somehow or other, I can't believe that's bad. I just, I just didn't, didn't quite get that part. Um, but the other part on the food that I thought was, uh, was, was a really interesting point, and that is whether you use... Um, um, the rules on SNAP to insist on healthier foods. I mean, that's a real, you know, that's, that's a kind of Rubio versus uh, Ron Paul kind of a discussion uh, of uh, the rights of the individual versus the regulatory reach of the government. And I think that's something that uh, deserves some additional uh, discussion because I can well imagine that um, the objection to uh, <coughs> restricting choices by, by use of uh, regulatory regimes such as now, you know, it's, it's the right thing to do and it's the wrong thing to do. And uh, getting that right, I think, is a subject that I'm hoping we will be able to talk about some more. Having said, I'm not going to try to summarize. I, uh, I, 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 <laughs> well, okay. I mean, well, no, I didn't. I, I, I commented. I commented. Uh, let me uh, let me make uh, one more, a uh, couple more comments. One, uh, let me remind uh, members of the roundtable and guests that the next workshop of the roundtable is in March of next year. And its title is The Role of Environmental Exposures and Obesity. Uh, we heard a lot about obesity today. Um, it, is a, it, it is an American, well, it's a worldwide, but it's a particularly American phenomenon and, and health problem. And we're going to uh, address part of it in March. And I hope that you will put March 2 and 3 on your calendars. <clears throat> and the last thing I would uh, uh, say, I would want to thank Kathleen and our friend here who, is, who, is, uh, who has made all the mechanics work but has been working diligently for, 
weeks and months on getting this program put together. We're very grateful to you uh, for, for pulling this together, a very interesting, very useful, very relevant, very timely uh, discussion. And we thank the discussants, and we just thank the audience for participating. And with that, it's not yet drinks time, but it's almost drinks time. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming.